Okay, so I'd like to take a look at interstitial sites. And these are, what are these? These are spaces between other atoms. Okay, so, you know, for, for example, um, you know, carbon is a small little atom and in amongst iron, it can occupy a little space between them. It goes into solid solution um, and it can dissolve. It can't dissolve very much of it, but that's an interstitial site. But we've already seen interstitial sites in another. Uh, we, can, we see interstitial sites in uh, in sodium chloride as well. Right? Sodium uh, chloride, NaCl. So there we had we had these chlorine anions in FCC tight positions with sodium nestled in between them. So that's a space between other atoms, isn't it? We could say that the sodium is in one of those spaces. It's in an interstitial site. But what kind of interstitial site is it? And to look at that, we need to actually go out into three dimensions. I mean, it looks like, in this case here, it looks like this chlorine label these for you here, chlorine and sodium. It looks like the chlorine is touching um, four sodiums, or in fact, actually, is the way we often do it is we would look at the uh, sodium uh, touching four chlorines. But that's only in two dimensions, right? That's two dimensions. So we gotta we got to go to three dimensions. So to do that, we need to go to the unit cell for sodium chloride. And you'll um, remember that we've got chlorines in, in the corners here. That's conventionally how it's illustrated. And in the face-centered positions. All right, back there. Those hidden faces in that there. Um, and then we've got sodium occupying these edge positions. Okay, edge positions like that. And so there's 12 edges. And what fraction of a of a circle is within the uh, of a sphere rather is within the unit cell? Well, only a quarter. Okay, because we've got a uh, um, a sphere that's cut into wedges basically. So we've got 12 positions on the edges times one quarter each. That's three. We know there's got to be there's four chlorines, so we're missing one. And the one that we're missing is the one that I'm actually interested in, the one right in the very center of the cube. And that one's not cut up at all. That's in the very center of the cube, and that is probably the easiest position to picture for this when we're trying to picture in three dimensions this interstitial site. So that's the guy we're interested in. And I drew in with the yellow color the direction of nearest neighbor contact, which chlorines is touching it, and so I'd like to do that now. So coming out of the page, let me dial the, the axes for you. This would be, say, X coming out of the page, Y to the right, and Z up. In the x direction, out of the page and into the page, this sodium is making contact with those chlorines. In the y, uh, along the y-axis, to the left and to the right, is contacting the two, those two face-centered atoms. And then top to bottom, and it's the same distance, even though my sketch is not quite right. In the z direction, plus and minus, this sodium is touching chlorines. So how many is it touching? It's touching one, two, three, four five, six. So we find that we have what we call a coordination number. That is the number of atoms touching a given atom. Coordination number of six. And so that would be one way you could describe it. But we, we often like to describe them in a, in a, a way, another way, um, and that's based on the geometric solid that's created. Just like we have the tetrahedron in, in diamond um, or tetrahedral symmetry for um, uh, methane. You know, we had a tetrahedron, this four-sided triangular-faced solid as a tetrahedron. This is just a side, right? Tetrahedra was four faces. 
So if we make some faces on this thing here, I'm going to connect as if we you know, put little triangular faces on this. We've got one face there. Um, and then slicing along in the, pl in the, the horizontal plane, we could then create another triangular face on the front. There's another one on the right here. And there's another one on the back. So I've created four, um, four triangular faces up in the top. And then there's four more down to the bottom as well. So in, in, in total, there's eight faces. And the structure, that geometric solid, is called an octahedra. Octahedra. So this is coordination number of six corresponds to what we call the octahedral interstitial site. Okay, octahedral interstitial site. And let me show you one more um, look at this. If we want to figure out you know, how big that was, what size of cation would fit into that octahedral site? Well, what we could do is we could take a slice right through this cube. I'm going to, you know, that, that, that cube there, this, this is beautiful yet messy. If you're just looking at it now, it looks like a mess. Let's, uh, let's redraw that. Okay, let's just start fresh for a moment just to show you where I'm getting, where I'm going with this. Okay. Now I'm always doing this and give myself enough room. Let's move that down a little bit. There we go. All right, we'll move that down. That should be enough room. And good. I'm gonna draw a beautiful cube here, one of my best. And okay, dash that in. You can see the back, excellent. And what I want to do is I want to say, okay, let, let's just look at, for the purpose of our discussion here, let's just look at that central interstitial site right in the very center of the cube. And then it's, we know it's making contact with the top face, the bottom face, the front face, the right side face, the left side face, and the back face. Okay. And then if I slice this whole cube, say, in eh, See, I sliced this cube this way okay, in the plane of the board, the plane of the page, straight up and down. Yeah, let me just redraw that one. I'm going to slice it like this. Here we go. Okay. I slice it like this. And then this guy is kind of not in the right spot. Pesky little anion. There he is. Okay. So I've sliced this thing in half. And. So now I've made this little plane, this green plane. And so that green plane, if I draw it, would have some anions here. I have an anion like that. Okay, it would have an anion over here, another one here, another one here, and in the very center would be this cation. Okay? And so that's kind of the, the interstitial, that's the site that we're looking at. And I'll make this just a little bigger so it's actually making contact. One thing that always happens, remember solids make, they, they reduce their energy by forming bonds, by increasing their nearest neighbor atoms. So we always observe in any structure that cations will be touching their nearest neighbor anions. Now, the anions don't necessarily make contact with other, let me just clear my picture here. Okay, they don't necessarily make contact with each other. So I'm going to just doctor that up a little bit. There you go. So in this case, here, these have been pushed apart. We know they're in FCC type positions, so they should be making contact with each other, but they've been pushed apart by the presence of this cation. And that's fine. That can happen. What we, we don't find happening is what I'll draw in just a, a second for you here. What we observe that um, does not occur in nature is this. I'm drawing the same interstitial site, just a little bit smaller, and I'm drawing it, um, I'll make that little so here bigger, um, I'm just drawing it um, 
uh, rotated by 45 degrees. We never find this happening, okay, where the cation is not touching the nearest neighbor anions. Okay, that that doesn't happen. It's a high that's a high energy. It's unstable. It won't happen. But let's consider the case right at the threshold between this where they're not touching and this where the cation has pushed the anions apart. Let's see if we can consider that special case there. I'm going to do that for you right now. So here's an anion, another anion, another anion, another anion, okay? And then we're going to position that cation right there in the middle of them, okay? Beautiful. And what we'd like to do is we have to say, well, how big is the cation that just perfectly fits? That perfectly fits. Geometrically ideal, if you will. And how could we express that? Well, we could express it as the size. If we just if we said let's just define the size of the anion as one, then you could define the size of the cation as a fraction of that. That is, if if I draw that same anion over here, okay, and I line up a cation in there, how big is it? You know? Is this dimension here, how's that dimension compare to this dimension? And you can kind of see by my sketch here, which is actually not a bad sketch, it's perhaps not my best, but it's not too bad. It looks like maybe it's, you know, on the order of a half, probably a little bit less. So we expect that our answer, our value should be, should give us that the radius of the cation divided by the radius of the anion is roughly 50%. We know what we think it should be. It should, in fact, be, if my sketch is accurate, which it is, although it's not <laughs> great, but it, we think it should be a little bit less than 50%. So we kind of have a sense for it going in what the answer should be. And so now there's some nice little geometry that works out here. If I connect from the center of this anion to the center of this anion, and again to the center of this one, and then across on the diagonal, I get some very interesting geometry because it goes right through the center of the cation. And we know that this distance here is twice the radius of the anion. So that's the radius of the anion times 2, as is this dimension. And this hypotenuse here is um, it's the... Um, what is it? It's the um, it's twice the radius of the anion, plus twice the radius of the cation, isn't it? So now we've got some some nice little um, and fairly straightforward math that we can uh, we can work out here, and that is that oh and this angle here, right? What's that angle? That angle's got to be 45 degrees. So we could say, okay, great. So sine 45 is going to be equal to opposite. So that's two times the radius of the anion over the hypotenuse, 2 times the radius of the anion plus the radius of the cation. Oh, correction times 2 of that. Okay, so that's great. Now twos cancel out. We can multiply across. We could say uh, R A sine 45 plus R C sine 45 equals R A. Not too bad. And what are we after? This is the term we're after, so we want to divide by R A. You can't just do that willy-nilly, you know, we have to follow the rules of math here, so we're just going to divide both sides by R A, and then everyone's happy. And so that's great. This is 1 on the right-hand side there. Uh, this is 1 over here. Okay, so this is looking good. And we're going to have then that RC over RA is equal to 1 minus sine 45 over sine 45, which everyone knows is 0 0.414. I'm just joking. Everyone doesn't know that. But you can calculate it, and it's 0 0.414. And hey, that's great, because that's a little bit less than 50%, isn't it? So that tells us the ideal size of a cation that will fit into the octahedral interstitial site. And in fact, this is 
this would, would provide us the basis for predicting some crystal structures with some, you know, just some limitations, of course. But a cation that's anything um, less than 0 0.414 times the anion radius would not occupy the octahedral site. If it's less than that, well, maybe it would occupy a tetrahedral site because tetrahedral is smaller. But it could certainly occupy tetrahedral, the octahedral site, if it was anything, well, if it was a little bit larger than this. And so the, that, that gives us a little bit of an understanding for the, the size of these interstitial site, sites. And the relative sizes of these sites, um, at least the ones that we're probably most immediately interested in, would be tetrahedral, is, is one of our smaller ones. Okay, then octahedral, which is the one we just worked out. And then there's a larger one, actually, which is right in the very center of a cube. It's like the body-centered position that you're, you, you may, um, can imagine right in the very center of the cube. And so that's the, the um, octahedral. That's the simple cubic um, interstitial site or, or just cubic interstitial site. Actually, cubic interstitial site. I'll just delete that. Okay. cubic interstitial site. Perfect. So those are that's a little uh, look at interstitial sites.